So good morning, everybody, and um, thank you very much for coming to our session, which is about sedation and weaning in children, and we're going to describe for you the Sandwich Trial. We're very pleased to be here because we're on home turf, and, it, and it's great to have this symposium to um, present to you um, aspects of the trial, like the statistical aspects and the um, data management aspects, and about the CT. Um, I know that many of you will probably come from a discipline that knows nothing about paediatric weaning from ventilation, so I'm just going to take a, a moment to explain to you what that is. Um, weaning from ventilation, these children are very, very sick in intensive care, and weaning, if you think about the analogy of weaning children from a bottle onto solids, it's the same type of concept. First of all, we'll drop the ventilator support, that's the breaths per minute, as the child is starting to get better. And so they drop the ventilator support and the child starts to take further spontaneous breaths. Now the process of doing that is obviously um, quite complicated, depends very much on the, on the child's condition. Um, and um, sorry. And it's a, a very important sort of topic area, and it's important because it's important for the child. And um, when you are on mechanical ventilation, it's a therapeutic treatment. And when you're on mechanical ventilation, the longer you stay on, the worse, um, the, the, well, the higher the risks are. Um, and and um, those sort of risks for the child are things like getting pneumonia, also um, damage to the throat, and um, also the more sedation that is used when a child is on the ventilator, they'll get delirium and then maybe eventually uh, withdrawal syndrome. So it's a really important clinical um, um, focus of getting uh, the child on the ventilator. The NHS has, um, the NHS determined that this was a high priority. The NIHR then commissioned this trial and funded it. Uh, the sponsor is Queen's University of Belfast and the Northern Ireland Clinical Trials Unit um, is managing this. So the overview then of our session will be that I'm, I'm going to give you an outline of what the trial is about. Then Kleina is going to talk about the step wedge design. And um, Mags is going to tackle the trial management um, because it's a very large trial as you'll see. And then Evie is going to talk about the role of the NICTU and the study statistician. So why are we using, why did we come to look at this specific intervention, sedation and weaning? Well, we know already that there are many more effective ways, practice changes all the time, and there are many more effective ways of weaning from uh, mechanical ventilation. And in adults, the, the evidence has shown that using this new method which we are using a part of in this study and um, has been shown to be very effective and very safe and has changed practice in all the adult intensive care units but the evidence for this in children is really not so clear we conducted a systematic review of the evidence only three trials one large one the large trial showed a 32 hour reduction in the time on a ventilator and so this is given some sort of confidence to um, clinicians in will it work um, in paediatric intensive care units. We also know from a qualitative evidence synthesis that there are a lot of factors that are really important in implementing such, a, um, such an intervention because it's a practice change, context and, and process are really important points. So this helped us in the design of the trial. We conducted a lot of feasibility work as well, looking at what is normal UK practice in sedation and weaning. We know it is very variable. The junior staff on the wards, they are not actively involved. It's only the senior staff who are not around a lot of the time. And the PICU staff, they want a more standardized approach and they actually voted this as their first priority topic. We know from interviewing parents and children that they say the biggest priority for them is having a reduced duration of ventilation, getting them off the ventilator is the most important point. 
So the research questions for this study then were, will the sandwich approach to managing sedation and weaning um, uh, ventilation enable coordinated management of weaning and reduced delays in the weaning process? So it's important not just to introduce a new protocol, but to introduce a new way of working, which is a coordinated way. So we're looking for, does it result in patient benefit and no additional harm? Is it cost effective? And is it sustainable and acceptable to staff delivering care? Okay, I'm gonna go through some of the PU components and participants. Well, we have 18 pediatric intensive care units involved in the trial from England, Wales, and uh, Northern Ireland. So that's 72% of the eligible UK PICUs. We are including all children who are receiving invasive mechanical ventilation on an ICU. We're excluding those who will either die very shortly or actually have a tracheostomy tube in, so they will not actually reach the end point of extubation. Our target sample is about uh, 9,500 and we have actually exceeded that to date. And we are using an opt-out consent approach, which has been approved. Um, obviously, we could run a trial of this size if we had to get consent from all parents. So it's a low-risk study and they're included unless they um, opt out. So we'll give you, first of all, the comparator and what is usual care. Sedation assessment by nurses is usually conducted using a, a tool called a comfort tool. Um, they don't assess at, at the same time. Some of them assess every hour, some of them assess a couple of times a day. There's no discussion of these scores with doctors, so there's no collaboration between the doctors and nurses about the sedation. Nurses tend then to use liberal sedation and of course, if you give too much, then that will delay weaning because they're too sleepy. Ventilation weaning is led mainly by the consultants in the intensive care units, and there is little or no involvement of the junior staff, which I think is quite weird, given that most of the junior staff are right at the bedside. So the weaning method involves this gradual reduction of the ventilator support, right down to a particularly low level and um, before extubation, before taking that's taking the tube out. The intervention differs then in the way that we propose to do this. So we are having um, four key components to this intervention. But the first one is that the nurses must assess comfort a minimum of six hours, every six hours um, in the day. The second component is the multidisciplinary ward round. We want doctors and nurses to be together on the ward round, where it is discussed what the sedation management will be, what drugs they should give, and also what the plan is for getting the child off the ventilator. And this is communicated then to the bedside nurse, the junior nurse. And generally, the bedside nurse, what they will do every day is a check of five simple criteria. We have it on a checklist. Five simple criteria, and if they reach green, the child meets each of these, they then have to approach a more senior member of staff who is, um, um, who is competent to do this, and they'll ask them to do a spontaneous breathing trial. And what a spontaneous breathing trial is, is that the criteria will ask them when you reach this point of ventilation to go and talk to someone and then when you do a spontaneous breathing trial instead of weaning down 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 you will go immediately to a lower level for um for a few hours to see if the child can breathe on that level and if they can then you could extubate them you could take the tube out and so that's the idea of getting them off the ventilator um, a lot earlier. The outcomes that we're measuring are broken up here into four categories. There are intervention specific um, outcomes with our primary outcome being the duration of mechanical ventilation. And then we're looking at things like how successful the extubation was, the removal of the tube or whether they self extubate um, and um, some other clinical outcomes. They, we're also looking at resource economic outcomes and, and, and we're looking at harms, the ICU and hospital mortality and any complications. <coughs> we're also looking very much at, at, sorry, 
interest of Ombo. And we're also looking very much at the process factors because this is a clinical um, because this is a, a clinical uh, study, it's a change in practice. So we want to look at factors that are related to undertaking the training and delivering the new approach and whether they adhere to that. So the, the design then is a cluster randomized stepped wedge design. And in this we have um, 17 sites. One of the sites has two pediatric intensive care units. Each line here represents a cluster or a site and they are randomized um, every single month. We started three months before to give the clinical staff time to set up their, their, their rotas. All sites started at the same time and then they every four weeks one was randomized to crossover. They entered a training period and it wasn't until this training period that they were introduced fully to what the intervention was before they crossed over to the intervention period. And the rationale for not, for not introducing the intervention fully until this period was so that we wouldn't contaminate control and intervention. The um, trial started on the 5th of February 2018. It ends um, next month on the 14th of October and the actual study ends then at the end of March next year. The training then is really important. It's, in, it's an educational package. It's delivered online and also face-to-face -face delivery. We have quite a large uh, training manual and a lot of promotional resources then to encourage staff to use those. It's being managed by an implementation manager and this person goes in and trains the trainers in each of the intensive care units. That's why we went for step wedge to enable that to um, occur. On the ward, on the intensive care units, we have these champions and we have research nurses. And the target was that 80% of staff in that unit had to be trained within the eight week period. One of the novel things we have is a sub study running alongside this, which is a process evaluation. And I know many of the statisticians will not understand the qualitative process evaluation, but here it's important to have this type of a uh, study because the intervention is complex. It has four different components and they're interdependent and interrelated to each other. It's also a multi-centered trial and so therefore it's susceptible to many variations that happen across uh, 18 sites. And the process evaluation then will help us to distinguish between if there was a failure in the intervention itself or if there was a failure in implementation. Um, it will also deliver information concerning any barriers or facilitators to staff adopting this type of intervention. So we're following the framework which has been developed for a process evaluation of um, critical care trials. And um, this evaluation involves qualitative exploration of the context, the mechanism and impact on the outcomes. And this involves interviews with staff and also takes on board the adherence uh, data. So in summary, um, this is the largest pediatric trial in the UK, 18 pediatric intensive care units, more than 9,500 children involved and more than 2,000 staff have been trained to use this intervention. The reach of this is actually very high. <laughs> Last year there were about 14,000 children um, who required invasive mechanical ventilation in, in the UK. So this means that 70% of all children in the UK will be weaned using this new intervention. So we've, we've made a massive change and move across um, uh, and had change in practice. Um, it, it's a step wedge design and that's a major factor in contributing to the impact and Kalina is going to speak about that next. And it also really requires effective trial management and that is crucial to success. So having the right research investigator team and the CTU that can deliver the staff skills to manage it is really important. And I am so pleased to be working with the Northern Ireland Clinical Trials Unit in this because they have all those skills that are available and Evie will be talking about that. 
So thank you very much, and I'm happy to take any questions. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Kaylin Dole, and I am the head of stats at the Northern Ireland Clinical Trials Unit, and I'm also acting as the trial statistician on the sandwich trial. So I'm here today to just have um, to give you a short introduction into how the data was collected on the sandwich trial, how we came to get to our sample size of nine and a half thousand children, and um, to explain to you about what the stepwise trial design is, and then um, touch on the analysis methods which we are planning to use at the end of the trial. So um, data collection, as Brona had mentioned earlier, we were going to use um, Picanet. Um, so the trial collaborated to make the best use of the established data collection infrastructure which already exists in the PICUs across the UK. And all participating PICUs routinely submit clinical data to the National Audit of Paediatric Intensive Care. This data is used locally by participating um, ICUs to monitor activity and performance, and they have full access and ownership of the data. And PICANET were able to um, organize a little download function for us for which just had specifically the sandwich data on it, which all sites could use to download um, the data or their own data. And the data we were collecting through Picanet was baseline data such as gender, age, previous ICU admissions, and the pediatric critical care minimum data set, which was used to assign unit costs for um, the health economists, and also PICU death and length of stay. Um, we also collected other data using an electronic case report form, which was built using um, macro. So our other outcome measures, our primary outcome um, of duration of mechanical ventilation and several of the secondary outcomes, as well as our, completion, our compliance with the duration <coughs> and ventilation parameters were all collected using the electronic um, a CRF and this was entered onto the CRF by delegated um, uh, personnel at sites. So as Brona mentioned earlier, our target sample size was 9,520 patients. And we used PICU admissions data from the years 2014 to 16 to inform our sample size assumptions. And um, from this data, we calculated that the mean was 5.8 days and with a standard deviation of 9.6 days. And we were also able to calculate an intra-cluster correlation coefficient of 0 0.005. Um, it was postulated that a reduction of one day on ventilation was both clinically important and achievable. And using Professor Carla Hemming, who's from the University of Birmingham, using her app, we were able to uh, insert all these assumptions and come up with, we came up with our sample size of 9,520. So just to show you what the app looks like, um, these are just screen graphs of the app for you um, to show you what we enter. Um, you have to pick what our child design is. For us, we picked step wedge. Um, we actually uploaded our own design for the stepwise, so I'll show you that in the next slide. Um, all the different assumptions that we had to pick for ours, uh, the number of clusters per arm, our ICCs, which we calculated from our data, our mean difference, standard deviation, our significance level, all, of, all of those assumptions were entered and um, we were able to calculate our sample size. We, as I said, we um, uploaded our own trial design. So this probably doesn't make much sense to you, but it had to be a CSV file consisting of zeros, which represented the control arm, and um, blanks for the transition or the training period, and ones for the intervention. And we were able to upload that into the app. And um, so we were using our specific trial design. Um, I've superimposed this onto the trial design that Brona used a previous slide on, so you can sort of make more sense of it. So the green section is all our control period for all sites, the ones are the intervention period for all sites, and then the training period in the middle where we didn't collect the data um, on macro. And 
once we uploaded the slides or uploaded that design, I purchased this beautiful power curve. Um, and if I go, I don't want to say any harm at the moment, but if I go to 0.8, which represents 80% power, move across to our line here and then down the ways, this tells us that approximately 28 patients per cluster per period are required in order to achieve 80% power. And that gives us a total of 9,520 patients when we multiply the number of PICUs we have by the number of um, steps, which was 20, by the um, cluster size of 28. We already exceeded that, so our power is actually in excess of 80%. So to move on, what is actually the step wedge child sign? It's a novel cluster randomized trial design that's particularly valuable in implementation research. And um, it's particularly relevant for evaluating service innovations in learning healthcare organizations. And the step wedge cluster randomized trial involves randomization of clusters such as primary care units, wards, hospitals to different sequences that dictate the order in which each cluster will switch to the intervention condition. And to represent this um, grammatically, you can see here, this is just a normal cluster randomized control trial where each cluster will either get the intervention or the control. This shows the step wedge design where you're showing our each cluster moves to the intervention period along um, a step at different time points throughout the trial. And then this design is what the sandwich trial was based on, where we had a pause for training, which was actually eight weeks for sandwich before the sites moved to the intervention. So moving on, our um, statistical analysis plan. So um, over the course of the trial, um, new methodologies are being published. Um, which maybe we didn't think of originally when we were um, putting in our grant application for Sandwich. And we also are planning analysis that might, might actually be, we use Stata in CTU. Um, it might be able to cope with the models, so SAS maybe is more appropriate. So these are the sort of things you have to take into consideration. Um, it's complicated due to the diversity of the types of um, step wedge cluster randomized trial designs. There are methodological features, which I'm going to touch on, and methodology may not even exist at the start of the trial, but over the course of the trial may um, be published that we could use. And then the computational issues I've mentioned are to do with the models that we'd be using that Stata might be able to cope with, but SAS may. So for the sandwich trial, our core design elements, we had 17 um, sequences, we had one cluster per sequence. Our step length was 28 days. We had 22 periods, which included the two transition periods, so one, only 20 periods of data collection. And our sample size per cluster period was 28. So the methodological features of the step wedge cluster randomized trial is compounded by time. Um, there are complex correlations over time and within clusters. There are heterogeneous treatment effects, so how do we accommodate the cluster variability in response? There are time varying treatment effects, so how do we allow for non-constant treatment effects? Um, there's transition periods in sandwich, and there are also heterogeneous secular trends, so how do we examine systematic variation in secular trends? So the analysis we're planning Obviously, we're going to present our descriptive stats for baseline characteristics by exposure and non-exposure. And units will be classified as being um, exposed to the intervention on completion of their eight-week training period. Um, events occurring during this training period will not be included in the final analysis, with the exception of hospital discharge. So due to the nature of our primary outcome, which is time to successful excavation, um, some of the data observations are going to be censored. Um, the censoring will, will occur due to 
moving to other units prior to excavation, um, still being intubated when the unit transitions to the training phase. Um, some patients may not be weaned at the end of the 20 month trial period. They may have a tracheostomy inserted. They may not be weaned by 90 days, or unfortunately they may die. Um, the analysis we're planning, um, due to the censoring, we're anticipating fitting a Cox proportional hazards model. Perhaps with some treatment by covariate interaction to incorporate any non-proportionality. We're going to allow for clustering using a frailty term for each unit, which is similar to a random effect in a mixed effects model. And we're going to always adjust for calendar time since the intervention is sequentially ruled out. Um, currently, there's no consensus over the best way to analyze step for edge cluster randomized trials. So we're doing our best with what is currently out there in the public domain. Um, and some other methods may come up that are more appropriate over time, and we may look back at sandwich and analyze again in the future when those techniques um, come out. Um, readmitted or transfer patients will be treated as independent events in our analysis. And our primary estimate of treatment effect will be a cluster and time adjusted hazard ratio along with 95% confidence intervals. Um, other outcomes will be analysed using generalised linear mixed models. We'll report the risk differences for binary outcomes and the main differences for continuous outcomes. And we will always adjust for cluster and time effects. So that's me. Um, it's just a short introduction into the analysis for um, Sandwich trial. And um, happy to answer any questions.